I'm very happy to be here uh, speaking at the Middle East Bunkering Convention. Shipping finance, of course, is not directly related to bunkering, but uh, all aspects of shipping and, as, uh, ship and, and, and finance to shipping, it takes bunkering and the fuel sources into account. It's extremely exporting these days. IMO 2020 has been a huge issue over the last few years. I mean, there's been a lot of debate about how it's going to work, who is going to be affected. We're now 30 uh, days or so uh, into uh, IMO 2020. And for the finance uh, providers, it's critically important. I mean, of course, there, there's much more monitoring and reporting going on from uh, clients of banks and finance providers. They want to know if their clients are in adherence of uh, the rules and the regulations. Uh, it's not absolutely clear what will happen if they're not, but nonetheless, I think there is uh, a lot of pressure on the industry to clean itself up. And for the banks themselves, it's extremely important that their clientele are doing whatever they can do to be in absolute adherence to IMO 2020. I think these environmental uh, initiatives, uh, which are which IMO 2020 is the first phase of this, but a lot more is going to come, is welcomed by the banks and the finance providers. This is a great opportunity, I believe, for shipping to clean up uh, its act. I mean, shipping is perceived as a dirty industry. That is not perhaps the belief of those people involved in the industry, but the general impression of uh, shipping is that it has to clean itself up. And I think there is a great opportunity in the years to come for shipping to clean itself up. And we welcome the uh, rules, the regulations, uh, IMO 20, the first of which is now in place and many more are to come. The international banks have uh, created a, a club for the Poseidon principles. Uh, and this uh, 16 banks are currently signed up. More banks and perhaps Chinese leasing companies are expected to join in the future. And so the criteria for getting shipping finance is not simply being a profitable company, uh, is being a profitable company, but which adheres to uh, ESG, the environment, social and governance, the IMO 2020, thinking about the environment, how to clean it up, burning the most efficient uh, fuels, the most efficient propulsion systems and thinking about the future. So it's all vitally important and it's a welcome for the industry. Hi, my name is Paola, I'm from Venezuela, and today I'm here at the Petrospot Marine Conference, uh, walking through the latest uh, rise that update into the crude market. And I just gave a presentation when I trying to summarize what happened in 2019, talking about 2019 was basically a roller coaster with the prices going up and down. Uh, the prices went up each time that we have news coming, especially on the Middle East of rising tension, and basically prices went down each time Trump tweeted. Uh, basically because uh, we have the demand headwinds coming from the US and China trade war, and we also have, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, the IMO 2020 have a, a special impact into the Middle East region because the Middle East region have traditionally been a crude producer, not really a products producer, but going forward or as of now, the Middle East is equipping in itself to trying to provide more products. So this year we actually have the startup of our 400,000 barrels per day refinery in uh, Saudi Arabia and thus is going to equip better the Middle East to actually provide products. Uh, the Middle East have also have a high yield of fuel oil or high sulfur fuel oil and the IMO is definitely going to impact the Middle East because of this but because we have this complex refinery entering then uh, this complex refinery is actually going to be able to take in a heavy oil that the region is producing and transform it into products that are high value. When it comes to the sustainability of the uh, oil markets, we are in a very interesting region. Why? Because the Middle East is the biggest producer of oil by far, more than any other region in the world, but it's also the region that is probably the best equipped to stand uh, for uh, the sustainability of the industry going forward. Why? For two reasons. First, because the Middle East have the lowest break-even of oil prices among any other region in the world. And when uh, the CO2 regulations, or not CO2 regulations, but as the world uh, is trying to reduce CO2 
emissions, the cost of emitting is gonna increase. And if you have a lower cost of production, that already makes you well equipped uh, to sustain these uh, changes. And as well, because the Middle East have actually the lower CO2, uh, CO2 intensity of production. And right now, when we see this pressure on in investors actually telling the industry that they need to lower the CO2 intensity, the Middle East is already well placed because they mostly produce a uh, oil on shore, uh, mature fields that have a very low intensity when compared, for instance, to Canadian oil sands, or even when compared to uh, um, the, the US shale, where they actually have to flare a lot. So uh, because of these two reasons, probably most of the producers in the Middle East are going to be the last men standing on the industry because these two things combine. Uh, I am not a bunkering expert like most of the people in this room are, uh, so it was very informative um, also about volumes and availability. Uh, we're obviously keen as support to also provide to our customers bunker facilities. There is plenty of product available as it seems. Uh, there's some logistical challenges which maybe we can play a role in to, to accommodate that. Uh, so overall we're, we're pretty confident that the region, despite geopolitical unrest and circumstances, can play, continue to play a significant role in, in the supply of bunker fuels in the region. Welcome to the Middle East Bunkering Convention 2020. This is the fifth annual convention we have here in Dubai. Um, this is the biggest by far, and it's all to do with 2020 and the International Maritime Organization's rules on or regulations on sulfur. Everybody wants to know about it. Everybody's very keen to learn, and there's lots and lots of uh, issues coming up uh, during this convention, which are being addressed by lawyers, by bunker suppliers, by bunker traders, by that people who test the fuel, etc. It's very interesting times and we're here to find out exactly what's going on. 